Buenos días. No hablo español, hablo un poquito de portuñol, mas acredito que ninguém va a comprender si intentar hablar portuñol. Voy a hablar inglés. So, let's go with English. I think it's sure for everyone. So, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, I will talk about innovation in sustainability and how Olympic and Paralympic Games can be a good tool to promote innovation in the area of sustainability. Uh, my name is Tania Braga. I'm head of uh, sustainability, accessibility, and legacy for the organizing committee of the Games Olympic and Paralympics in Rio. So to start with, just to give you uh, one idea of the organization I work for, this is a non-public organization. It's a non-profit association that has the task to uh, organize two events, Olympic and Paralympic Games in Rio. It's a temporary organization. We were created only to organize these two events and after that will disappear. Uh, I believe everyone here already knows Olympic and Paralympic Games, but just to give you a few numbers to have a taste of the size, the scale of this event. The Olympic Games are the biggest sport event in the world. Uh, we expect from the 5th to the 21st of August in Rio to receive uh, almost 11,000 athletes from 205 different countries. Indeed, what we organize is 42 world championships happening all at the same time during 17 days in one single city. So some other numbers to show the size of it. We have 25,000 accredited media professionals, uh, around 7,000 delegation members from NUC, and as many as chief of states that it's possible to gather in one single event. For the Paralympic Games, this is already the third biggest sport event in the world. Uh, 23 world championships happening at the same time during 12 days. We expect to receive 4,000 and a half uh, athletes from 178 countries, around 7,000 accredited media professionals, plus 1,300 technical officials, uh, referees, assistants, and other uh, technical staff. Uh, for this, we will count with the help of 70,000 volunteers. They have already been recruited. We have 240,000 people who uh, wanted to be volunteers. Now we have the difficult task to choose only 70,000 among them, and the work has already started. We also have a, we expect to have a global audience of 5 billion people, and to have a total of 5,600 hours of live broadcast. So it's a very huge uh, event from the size of the media. And what does it bring for innovation and sustainability? Basically, it brings an opportunity to show the world that innovation is possible in this area. And how do we approach this? Uh, first of all, this will be Brazilian games. It will not be like games we had before, because it will have a Brazilian taste, uh, with where we wanted to unite the passion uh, of the Brazilians with this capacity of sport to communicate with people from everywhere in the world, beyond cultures, languages, uh, in a way that can unite everyone. There will be four regions that unite a city. So the games will be spread in the city of Rio. We have four areas where the competitions will happen. First one is the area called Baja. Here we'll have most of the indoor sports. We'll have basketball, we'll have uh, swimming, we'll have tennis, we'll have handball. 
the second area, it's where we have a more, what we call the radical sports for the games. We'll have uh, uh, horse, uh, uh, we'll have BMX, mountain bike, uh, uh, modern pentathlon, rugby, uh, hockey, uh, different types of uh, sports. The area three is Maracanã. We'll have the main uh, Olympic Stadium here, although the Olympic Park, it's in Barra, so it's something new. We'll have the stadium. And why we did this? Because we're using the stadium that was built for the Pan American Games in 2007. So uh, athletics plus football, uh, volleyball and other sports will be here, big uh, stadiums in Area 3. In Area 4, Copacabana, it's where we have the outdoor sports. Uh, swim, uh, sorry, marathon swimming, uh, sailing, rowing, triathlon, and other outdoor sports. And talking about innovation and sustainability, the big challenge for us was to go beyond the visible, go beyond the surface in doing uh, games with uh, sustainability in its DNA. Uh, sometimes when we think about innovation, we think about materials, we think about technologies, but for sustainability, as important as to find more sustainable materials, more sustainable technologies, is to change the way we work, is to change our processes, and mainly to change the mindsets, to change the way people approach what they do why they are doing it and how uh, they want to do it. So we look at the challenges we had for the games and the first one was to deliver games without white elephants. There is a lot of criticism against mega events because of the white elephants. Basically, this is the big stadiums that gets not used after, has very little use. And how do we approach this? Basically, doing the most we could with existing venues. So we measure the area, uh, the built area used for venues competition, and this is what we will have in Rio. Uh, if you look in square meters, 71% of the area of venues competition are in already existing uh, venues, such as the Olympic um, Stadium that was built for the Pan Americans, Maracanã that was renovated for the World Cup, and other venues already existing in the city. 17% will be fully temporary, just made for the games and then uh, disassembled. And only 12% are new permanent venues. It means we have a very slim and small uh, construction uh, for those games. And for the temporary, we are innovating with this idea of nomadic architecture. What it means that we build for a reuse with a different use than the sport venue. Uh, temporary venues have been used before, but the problem is what we do with it after. If we have uh, 18,000 places uh, basketball stadium, how can we find someone who wants some place close by that wants such a big stadium? Sometimes it's not very easy. So what is being done in Rio, for example, this is the handball stadium, 12,000 people capacity for handball during the games. And it was planned on the drawing board to become four permanent schools in the city of Rio. So both the handball stadium and the schools, they were on the drawing board at the same time with the idea to maximize and use at least 60% of the material here to build the four schools. So it's a different way. You build already with the end use in your mind and you use the most of you can of the material and you made big, um, pre-assembled structures that can be easily dismounted and uh, put together for a different uh, 
use. The same it, we did for our headquarters that are also a temporary building where we could get some very interesting uh, features regarding sustainability, minimal disposal of waste because we use pre-assembled steel structures like big containers that we put together as a big Lego construction and up to 80% of this modular material are suitable to be reused in future installations. And how we ensure that it will happen? We didn't buy, we simply rented the space and the company who's renting for us per square meter will use this in new business they will run when they disassemble our building. We have ramps, signage in braille, inclusive elevators and toilets, tactical floor, it's fully accessible for people with all types of conditions. Air conditioning system with technology to reduce the consumption of energy and with cogeneration with solar uh, plan plates to heat water in cold days. And we also managed to have a system to reuse the rainwater and everything of that in a building that will only functioning for four years and then be dismantled. The other challenge we had was the alignment. How to put all the mindsets, how to make everyone think along more sustainable ways in everything they do while planning the operations. And the big challenge here was we grow very fast. So basically we double the amount of staff every six months. So basically whenever you came to agreement with someone on how you're doing things, there are two new people and you need to start again uh, and get them along the same lines. So how we could ensure that was a routine of think about sustainability in 54 functional areas in a growing force workforce until games time. So we look at all this and we think that the best way to embed sustainability in an event such as the work, uh, such as the Olympics and Paralympic games was to act in two points where we could basically take care of all. Sustainable procurement, every single thing we do to organize the game, sooner or later becomes a purchase decision. And if we act here, we can make it more sustainable. And training for the workforce. For the sustainable supply chain, I do believe this is the most innovative thing we're doing on sustainability for these games, is to put together a very comprehensive way of thinking about our supply chain that looks at production, use, and dissolution of the 30 million items we have to buy or rent for those games. And we put together a very consistent way of working where we s develop uh, requirements, clear requirements for each product and service, and we develop guides that uh, specify everything we need for each product, each service we hire. We develop the market because it's not enough to put out your requirements. If the market is not prepared, if companies are not prepared to uh, go along these lines, we just lose time. So we started four years before the games to work with industry associations, to work with different partnerships, to develop Brazilian companies so they could uh, comply with those requirements and remain competitive, evaluate all the targeted suppliers, monitor the compliance, and manage our dissolution. So whenever we buy or rent something, we already know how we will we'll be dissolved, what is the end use of each product or service we buy. Uh, another important part was to raise the bar on sustainable procurement. We could not do it on our own. So we basically rely on partnerships. One partnership very interesting we did was with the Brazilian service for small and uh, micro enterprise. So we are, uh, being very successful in get small enterprises as our suppliers. At the beginning, it was a big challenge, but it's working very well with this partnership. As well, we have partnerships with companies that certify certified wood, certified fish to provide uh, sustainable products for the games. 
and as well in partnership with the Brazilian chapter of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development to, de to develop a methodology and uh, a tool, a software, to help decision-making, including sustainability uh, for buyers, for supply chain professionals. And it's already recognized by Brazilian industry as a best-in-class in sustainable purchase. Uh, making this more tangible, so what are some of these requirements? Uh, for example, in the medals that uh, the athletes will compete for, we will have a large amount of uh, precious metal recycled from e-waste. Uh, basically, computers and uh, phones in their um, parts, you can find both gold, copper, and uh, silver, and we are going to use this to produce the medals for the games. Other examples, biofuels from recycled cook oil in the generators, power generators, uh, light vehicles using ethanol, income generation through waste management and cooperatives of waste pickers, and some work we did with 20 NGOs to define criteria to buy healthy and sustainable food uh, for our the 14 million meals we have to serve during the games. Workforce training, very important part of this. So all our staff receive specific training on sustainability when they enter. There is an e-learning for all employees to go more deep in the subject. We also do the same type of training for volunteers and we are a constant presence in the internal communication channels to spread the, this to all our staff. Very important part, accountability. So we also need to tell the society what we are doing, how we are doing, and to have indicators that prove that we are um, working towards our targets. So in 2014, last year, we released the first sustainability report uh, following international guides called GRI, Global Report Initiative. It was the first report to be published by a big event in Brazil. We also uh, report, launched the first Olympic Games impact report that look at the imp impact of the games in the city from economic, cultural, social, sport, and environmental point of view. We launched the first report on carbon footprint management and three years bef ahead of the games in 2013, a complete purchase plan where we gave transparency to everything we're going to buy and when. And of course, we also organized, uh, it's important to have direct dialogue, not only through publications. We organized a few rounds of multi-stakeholder events with civil society. Another partnerships, it's very important. We also work very closely with our sponsors. One example here is DAO, that we are working together to uh, mitigate two million tons of carbon footprint by uh, through innovation technologies in agriculture, industry, and construction sector in Brazil. And this will be used to compensate for the emissions of the games. And we also have a partnership with the United Nations Environmental Progr Program to promote sustainable tourism in activities we do in Rio with hotels, with restaurants, and on a campaign that will start early 2016 with tourists on how they can behave in a more sustainable way while traveling. So this is an overview of how we try to innovate with processes and mindsets as we go along preparing for the games. And I am available if you have any further questions. Thank you.